Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the recent rating action of Ecolab. I'm joined by Paul Curious, who's a director in the chemicals team based here in New York. Paul, thanks for joining. Good to be here, Mike. So, Ecolab recently closed on its acquisition in Alco Holdings. We lowered the rating from A to a triple B plus with a stable rating outlook. Maybe talk a little bit about the drivers behind the downgrade. Sure. Uh, as you just mentioned, Mike, uh, Ecolab recently closed on an approximately eight and a half billion acquisition of Nalco Holding Company recently. The key reason for our downgrade is the increase in financial risk as we see it at, at Ecolab. And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the other reason for our downgrade is uh, what we view as integration risk of a large acquisition at Ecolab. Just circling back uh, to the increase in financial risk, Total adjusted debt at Ecolab is now about $7 billion pro forma for the acquisition. Uh, compare that to uh, the debt at Ecolab last year, about $1.5 billion. I'm rounding off numbers here. So there's a meaningful increase in debt here. Of course, we are considering EBITDA from the acquired company. And, and when you consider that total uh, adjusted debt to EBITDA is now at about three times pro forma for the acquisition and related funding. But that's still a meaningful increase from the approximately one time uh, last year at Ecolab. Uh, let's look at the integration risks now. Nalco is a $4.5 billion company. Ecolab is an approximately $6.5 billion revenue company. Uh, so the integration of a large, complex company with global operations uh, is, is bound, in our view, to generate some sort of integration risk, and that's been uh, partly a driver of our rating action. Okay, so, so you, you just talked about a lot of negatives, but we still do have a triple B plus rating on, uh, on Ecolab, so there must be, well, what are the positive attributes to, to this deal? Yeah, sure, there are uh, positive attributes uh, to the deal. In fact, uh, we believe that the acquisition strengthens uh, the business risk profile at Ecolab to excellent from strong. Uh, that elevates the combined uh, business risk profile to the top tier in our assessment. Now, we believe that the acquisition brings together two large service-oriented global companies that are leaders in their individual spaces together. Ecolab is a leader in cleaning, sanitizing, food safety for a broad range of customers. Nalco is uh, equally a leader in its segments, including water treatment. So. Uh, there's clearly synergies, as, as we view it, uh, in EBITDA and in cash flow generation, uh, but not just yet. How about, um, how, how, I believe there was a share repurchase program put into place uh, by Ecolab. What's our view on that? Well, Ecolab announced a billion dollar share repurchase program, which it said it will execute uh, by year end 2012. Uh, now we believe we need to view the share repurchase in, in totality. Now, when you look at the transaction, uh, Ecolab is funding the acquisition with about $3.7 in equity issuance. Uh, so there is some share buyback, but there's also some equity issuance related to, to the acquisition. Uh, so overall, there's a moderate amount of net share issuance uh, at Ecolab uh, when you look at the, their sources of funding for their total requirements. Nonetheless, we view the share buybacks as either increasing debt or, if funded through free cash flow, as delaying the pay down of debt raised for the acquisition and as a slight uh, credit negative. Sure. How about, uh, let's, uh, so prior to the deal, Ecolab ma maintained an A corporate credit rating. That's right, we want a credit watch negative. So, yeah. so what would we, what would be the factors? I mean, do, do we see, what, what, would, what would it take to change our view of the triple B plus uh, at this time? We're on a stable outlook uh, with the triple B plus rating, so we're not expecting to change uh, the rating anytime soon. Still, uh, over the next one or two years, if unexpected integration challenges uh, you know, bring down EBITDA or diminish uh, cash flow generation so that uh, the funds from operations to total debt ratio dips below 20% with uh, no prospects of improvement, then we'd certainly consider a lower rating here. Uh, you know, in our downside uh, scenario modeling, uh, we looked at several scenarios, and, and uh, in one of our scenarios, when EBITDA dropped to 17% uh, and revenue stayed flat, uh, FFO to total debt uh, declined below 20%. So that would be a cause for, for a potential downgrade. On the other hand, if integration happens faster than we expect or generates more cash flow than we expect, more EBITDA than we expect, uh, and credit metrics strengthen uh, to the FFO to total debt strengthens to uh, the high end of the 25 to 30% range, then we would consider an upgrade. 
uh, beyond uh, you know a sort of one to two year uh, time frame covered by our outlook uh, you know we think that Ecolab would need to improve its financial risk profile meaningfully uh, to get to a, a higher rating beyond the notch that that we just discussed uh, we'd also have to see improvements in financial policy at Ecolab uh, and we'd have to be convinced that management would be supportive of a higher rating uh, in but uh, that's some way away, and at this point, we're at the triple B plus table. Well, Paul, appreciate you joining. Uh, thanks. We'll see you again next time.